Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this homepage teardown. Um, Pedro is going to go through just what makes this homepage great, as well as some of the, the optimizations that Figma could do to really increase their homepage conversion rate. Um, this is part of a series that we're doing uh, to create a bit more awareness around Pedro's new program that we're launching at Product Lab, which is all going to be around how do you increase your homepage conversion rate by at least 10% by the end of the four-week program. So, um, Pedro, want to just tell us your high-level overview of this homepage, what makes it great um, in your opinion? Yeah, that's, let's dive right in. Uh, there are a lot of good things about this page that uh, that I like, but there are still a few things, regardless of how good the page is, there's always a few things that we that could be done better. So, for example, the first thing that they do really well is that they can, they show that you can collaborate with your team, like as soon as you see the first section, the, the hero section of the page, right? So, uh, normally... Maybe it's because I've been uh, have the page open for a while. They always have like people moving stuff or collaborating or adding comments. It really makes it makes it click that uh, people are adding titles, making suggestions, adding comments, mm -hmm. sharing different versions, editing the design file together, right? Because uh, that's what 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 Figma wants to attract because they're like a, a cloud based software anyway, and uh, the more teams they have. Uh, the, like the bigger the teams they have, the the more they'll pay and the more revenue they make, right? So the really good thing about this page besides that, because team collaboration is a big objection, is that they actually show how they can affect the design process from beginning to end. Uh, so for example, they show that you can start off with ideas with Figma Gem. So you can start with post-it notes and mm -hmm. comments and, and they do this very visually. This is the thing that I like most about this page is even if you don't read the copy, you can get it by, for the, like, just by watching, seeing some of these images where you can see that clearly people are coll collaborating, voting on ideas, uh, creating client, uh, avatars, or just doing like a quick mock-up or wireframe of what it would look like. Right. Then they actually start off the design parts where are they going to add ideas? They're going to create their own styles. They're going to start uh, having their team collaborate on the designs and finish them. And then they just show how they're going to like deliver it to a, uh, uh, like this is still in the design parts. And then they just show it how they're going to build it, right? Or how they're going to just send it off to um, someone in the, the, the development team and some of the systems they have and so on, right? The issues that I have with this page is it didn't really show the full potential of what Figma can do for a couple of reasons, right? So one big ob objection that, that companies have is around the systems that they can create and the templates that they can create between the team, which is they gave like an example of what this would look like, but it didn't go any examples in terms of prototyping, any examples in terms of how you can build these design systems, any examples in terms of how you can export all of these different things. So it makes it easier for the developers to just take all those assets and develop them. They didn't show that actually Figma has a lot of, let's say, power-ups, let's say, that can compensate for what other tools do, like Adobe XD, where they do a lot of prototyping, right? That could probably be a big objection for Figma, which they don't really have that like natively uh, or is, doesn't have as much importance. But if you have a bunch of plugins that you can install, it can turn it into a tool that is really, really powerful, right? So that's something that they missed out on and they, they should have been a little bit more clear, right? So we would take something where they are really clear on the first two steps of the design stage, but then when it comes to exporting it and uh, like actually making it as useful as possible, that's the part they're missing out, right? Because in the community, they have a lot of plugins, a lot of templates, a lot of UI kits that are just not clear at the moment, right? They just say they have a big community and they have a, a material design UI kits that they can get in a million other places. And that's about it, right? That's the only thing they're missing out on. Now, do you right? feel like they did a good job of getting you to want to get started? Because I mean, a lot of the, the homepage conversion rates we're, we're talking about is like, how do you get that like 10%, mm -hmm. 20% uplift on your homepage conversion rate to get more people getting, getting started and mm -hmm. at least trialing or testing out your solution? Do you feel like they did a good job of that part? Or is there anything else they could have done to make it a lot more seamless for people to be like, okay, I'm just excited enough to, to get started and see for myself? This is, this is actually like a, a, the perfect question because... They did a, a really good job in terms of getting people to get started, but because they, they, they have so many users, they did a good job of people getting started and, and they're going to get like a lot of free users or a lot of small teams. And this is something that's going to be relevant in a couple of the teardowns as well, is that the thing they're missing out on 
is being clear on how the team is going to grow over time, right? So this is the difference between getting a lot of signups and getting a lot of big teams to sign up because that's how they make their money. If they ha- The more members in the team they have, right? So the more people that they show that could collaborate, even if they're not in the design team, so marketing people, adding ideas in the brainstorming phase or developers coming into the design file and exporting all the documents or UX people that don't, don't necessarily do the design, but they do the prototyping and then they come in. So the more use cases you, we give them for more people in the team to use Figma, that can mean that they have 50 or twice, 50% more or twice as many people in the team using it, which directly impacts how much money they make. And that's the thing that they're missing. How do you feel about their value prop when we look at like the above the fold? Is it crystal clear? Like what is Figma? Even if we, I know we both use Figma, mm-hmm. but uh, yep. if you pretend you didn't for a second, just looking at that, would it tell you much about like, what is this product? The thing with Figma is they have like a lot of brand awareness already. Uh, this headline is not great, obviously, but what happens is this, uh, like the visuals are so good that they speak for the copy. Right? They kind of speak for them for itself and they kind of compensate a little bit a little bit better. What made Figma uh, work so well is that they they were cloud-based. They had a really generous free plan and they had pretty much the exact same design tool. I used Sketch before. Uh, I would have to pay for it. It wouldn't be cloud-based. There's no way to collaborate properly. And obviously there's no generous free plan, right? So with those four, three or four things, they created themselves a really resistible offer. Everyone knows about it. Uh, and then it's so easy for them to convert. If this was, uh, you know, a page that would, uh, like a company that wouldn't be so popular, we would have to make those three or four things way clearer. So for Figma specifically, what it, in your own words, like what makes this an irresistible offer? In their case is that it addresses, uh, is, is that people look at this page and they see, okay, this is everything I'll need from the design tool. Everything I need to have all the designers in the team using it everything I need to create the design systems I want, a place where I can brainstorm the ideas in, a, in the first place, right? And a place that they can all collaborate at the same time and that I can uh, like visualize what the changes look like or collaborate in, in some other way, right? So this feels like everything they'll ever need with really simple pricing. It's cloud-based, designed for teams. So therefore, the other ones just feel 10% better at most. And this one is just the easiest one to start off with. Uh, the only thing that I would do in case they were a little bit earlier on in their stage is switching from one tree to another. Let's say you have a, a sketch file or an Adobe XD file, which I know there are some sort of uh, converters out there, uh, how easily you can migrate one of those projects so they could get started on that right away in case they wanted to switch tools. For sure. How do you think they address the, the where the copy addresses the user? Because like right from the get-go and i know with their pricing models like focusing on teams but it does feel very heavily like teams oriented not mm-hmm. just like okay this is going to be just for a designer it's like no this is so you can collaborate with your entire team yep. uh, you can't build anything great alone it's almost like kind of down looking like oh i'm just designing something for myself or something so i'm curious to hear um how that resonates with you or if you feel maybe the opposite feeling too i mean i think um in their case in particular, normally when you try to attract big big companies, there's like a couple of ways if you do it right, where you can attract the big companies without turning off the the like smaller people that want to try it out. Uh, maybe like a freelancer that uses or uh, with three projects a month or whatever their limitation is, because I think it's like one or two or three projects a month. Um, yeah. That this sounds totally do- doable because the way they look at it is, okay, this has everything I'll need, right? Uh, this... Uh, teams can use this, right? So if it's uh, good enough for teams, it's probably good enough for me. And when they do check the pricing, they check the pricing and say, hey, this is good enough for me. So I'm getting pretty much the same version of Figma that everyone is getting. I'm just getting a limited amount of files. Three Figma files a month is good enough for me. Um, so yeah, that's something that they, they'll uh, they'll probably like be really happy with anyway. Totally. Okay. So recap, two last questions. Overall score, uh, one to 10. The one being like, this is absolutely terrible homepage. 10 being this is like, you cannot touch this. This is absolutely world-class. I would not change anything. Uh, Where would you rank this from one to 10? 
I would rate it at 1.5 uh, at uh, 8.5. Not that bad. <laughs> 1.5, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 8.5, uh, because that would be horrible. Um, <laughs> yeah, with the, just those minor changes that I would make to make the team the collaboration even more obvious, because I think that's a really big opportunity that they have. Where right, So number one opportunity yeah. is like emphasize the team collaboration side of things? Yeah, because otherwise only designers going to feel like they should be using Figma when and it's not the case. They need yeah, to stop no. being seen uh, just a designer's tool. Yeah, that's what they want I probably. Hundred percent agree, and I think with like Fig Jam, I think that is definitely more of the the direction future because I yep. use it. I'm not a designer. <laughs> yeah, I use it every day too, and it's definitely not for designer purposes. Awesome. So everyone, that's a recap for Figma, and. We'd love to hear what you think as far as what you think they should do to improve their homepage so that you as a user want to sign up for it and just make it irresistible. 